It's Chick Charney Auto's Groundhog Day sales event. And we're not just slashing prices, we're gnawing them. Bring in a lower price for my competition, and I won't just beat it, I'll eat it. Ahem, <clears throat> sir, that's a family car. Let me show you something a little more suited to your exciting lifestyle. It's got a 6-liter turbocharged engine that produces over 400 horsepower. How would you like to drive home in this little speedster? You don't have to take my word for it. I've got the stats to back it up. Dear Cassie and Moby, How do people use graphs in real life? From SJ. Hey, SJ. Graphs are just a visual way to show mathematical data or information. Used correctly, they can help you understand that info in different ways. Like, check out this giant list of specs on this year's car models, including each one's top speed. How's this poor sucker, er, I mean, customer, supposed to see which one's the fastest? But if we display each model's top speed in a bar graph, it's a lot easier. It uses bars of different heights to compare amounts. Bar graphs are useful when you're looking for the most or least of something. The horizontal x-axis shows different car models, and the vertical y-axis shows top speed in miles per hour. And as you can see, the Piranha GT stands head and shoulders above the competition. Yep, graphs usually show a relationship between two or more factors, called variables. Like here, one of the variables is car models. And we're comparing it to the variable of top speed in miles per hour. But the Piranha isn't just quick. It's got the highest customer satisfaction rates in its class. They're selling like hotcakes and supplies will not last. Just take a look at this dot plot. These are great for showing frequency, like how often a car is purchased. But instead of numbers, this graph uses dots. In this case, each dot represents a car that was sold in the past six months. The y-axis shows the number of cars, and the x-axis shows the months. If we change the dots into images, like this, that's called a pictograph. Using images also lets us introduce another variable, different car models. You can see what each image represents here in the key. That's where you'll find info to help you interpret the graph. So now we've got three variables, months of the year, car models, and how many of each were sold. This way, we can compare sales over time and across different car models. Sales for this car keep getting stronger because the word of mouth on it is so positive. Whoa, don't make it look too easy. My boss is watching. I gotta earn my commission, you know. <clears throat> the piranha doesn't just look good, it's also good for the planet. This scatter plot lays it all out. Just like a dot plot, a scatter plot shows individual data points. But unlike a dot plot, both axes represent data that has to be measured. That's why the points don't stack up neatly in columns. Here, the x-axis shows the car's weight, measured in pounds. And the y-axis shows how far a car can travel on a single gallon of fuel. We measure that in miles per gallon, or MPG. So each point indicates the size of an individual car and its MPG. But you can also look at all the data together, which can reveal interesting trends. Like here, we can see that as the size of a car increases, it gets fewer miles per gallon. This relationship isn't surprising. Heavier cars take more fuel to drag around. But check out the red point. That's the piranha. It's higher up than cars of similar weights, because it gets more miles out of each gallon of gas. All of these stats, power, popularity, and fuel efficiency, probably explain this next one. Resale value which is best shown on a line graph. They're great for visualizing changes over time, like the value of a car. Here, we're showing what you can sell the average car for as a percent of the original purchase price, based on how old it is in years. You can see that four years in, the average car is worth just half of its original cost, but not the piranha. After four years, it's still worth 70% of the purchase price. All right, let's talk money. Our sale price for this model is $49,999. Trust me, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Let's break it down using a pie chart, a circular graph that shows the parts of a whole. Like in this example, the total price of the car is the whole pie. 
That includes the base price, 42 k plus all these extras. 8-track stereo package, leather seats, tinted windows, exotic wood trim, rubber flex undercoating, my more than fair commission, and of course, taxes and fees. All of that for under 50 k is a steal! Ooh, I don't know if we can go that low. Hmm. 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 You know what? You're a good guy. Let me check with the boss. You want the tube man? All right, I'll see what we can do. Please, boss, let me lower the price. I'm begging you. Well, that's enough of that charade. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, we can knock off 15%. <laughs> 